Welcome to Eco Ask Why, a podcast that dives into industrial manufacturing topics and spotlights the heroes that keep America running. I'm your host, Chris Granger, and on this podcast, we do not cover the latest features and benefits on products that come to market. Instead, we focus on advice and insight from the top minds of industry because people and ideas will be how America remains number one in manufacturing in the world. Welcome to Eco Ask Why. Today we have a hero episode and I'm very excited to talk with Alexis Hancock and she works at Dominion as a plant support engineer level two. Welcome Alexis. Oh, thank you for having me, Chris. I'm glad to be here. Oh, I'm excited to talk with you. So how's things in South Carolina today? It's very sunny and getting chilly, so I'm enjoying this weather, so it's going pretty good. Well, it beats last time I was in South Carolina because the humidity is so high. It can be tough in the summer in South Carolina, can it? Yes, it doesn't agree with my hair, so <laughs> bipolar weather in South Carolina, definitely. That's right. Well, it doesn't do with my hair either, and if you saw how my hair, you would uh, you would definitely be laughing because it's all about an eighth inch long, so, you know. <laughs> There's that, but uh, anyway, I am excited because, I mean, get to talk to you. You're you're in a, a wonderful company at Dominion. I used to do a lot of work with Dominion in Virginia. I have just a lot of fun working with all the different sites up there, so I'm anxious to hear your story, and we love to get started with these episodes, the hero episodes, with a little bit about your journey, so what, what could you share with us? Oh, uh, well, it all started in diapers. <laughs> no, just kidding. Well, Fast forward. Fast forward, I've, I've always been tinkering with stuff, so that was the first experience with engineering, breaking stuff in my mom's house and putting it back together before she got home. That was the biggest thing. I got to college, and I was so set on becoming a chemical engineer, and they exposed me to the different entities of engineering, and I fell in love with breadboarding and electrical engineering, so that's how I got there. And from there, I found out about this wonderful company named Scanna. And of course, it was a prominent company because that was the big thing here in South Carolina. So I ended up starting there, and now we are part of Dominion, and I'm so happy where I am. I love this company. This company is amazing, and I'm learning something new every day, so that's how I got here. Well, that's awesome. So do you remember anything you took apart that you, maybe your mom wasn't too pleased that you took apart, Alexis? Do you know table legs breaking, messing with cabinetry? Maybe some circuits that were popped out here and there. We're not going to tell her about Ah, that, but everything was fixed. Yeah, she may be listening, so be careful. (laughs) (laughs) So how about about school? Where did you go to school at? I went to the great University of South Carolina in Columbia. Go Cops! Okay, okay. Now, I've always been corrected because I got a friend, he works for us, and he went to South Carolina. He always calls it the Carolina, right? Not yes. confuse it with those Tar Heels. That is correct. We are the Carolina. Thank you for saying that. I'm glad we needed to make sure it was corrected out there. Yeah, well, I just wanted to clear the air, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so so as a <laughs> as an engineer, the plant support engineer, what exactly does that entail? Basically, we are the first responders of the plant. Anything that's broken or needs to be fixed, we're the front line providing technical analysis or different evaluations for pieces of equipment that are broken and, of course, need to be fixed. So we may not get to put our hands on it because that's for maintenance, but we're basically the brains behind the operation and just making sure the plant is functioning according to how it's supposed to be. I got you. Okay, so is it like multidiscipline type engineers in this group? Are you electrical yes. focused or mechanical or what? Yes. So there are different disciplines in the group. We have some biomeds, we have mechanicals, electrical, civil, and we assign different systems of the plant according to the discipline that you're knowledgeable of. So for me, I have a lot of electrical systems because that's my area of expertise. And all mechanicals have more of the mechanical systems and things like that. And civil may have some things like plex systems or things regarding the environment. So that's how they kind of did that there. Oh, okay. Well, that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. So in the industry that you're in right now with the, the utility, I'm sure there's some challenges that you're seeing. What are some of those? Challenges, how we can make energy more efficient. That's one big area that we've been focused on. Also, trying to debunk the myth of nuclear being unsafe is actually the safest thing. We are so safe. We have 
safety topics on how to hold the handrail. We have safety topics on how to climb the stairs and make sure you're watching where you're stepping in. We have all these different precautions that we take to ensure the safety of all of our employees and um, coworkers to make sure that they return home safely to their families. So yeah. I think those are the top two biggest things. Well, they, they are big. I mean, just going back a little bit on my background, Alexis, we used to do motor services and motor repairs. And I remember one time mm-hmm. we looked at doing, we, we started evaluating, should we start working with the nuclear power plants? Mm-hmm. But after we saw the requirements, oh my gracious, you're right. I mean, because <laughs> it's everything, it's the safest place on the planet. I mean, it really yeah. is. It, it's unbelievable the security that goes along, you know, with a, a nuclear power plant, but just all oh, the paperwork, yeah. the documentation, the, the paper trail of accountability. So I'm with you there. Great stuff. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. <laughs> So what about somebody that's listening? You know, we're trying to inspire people to come to industry, you know, to be a hero like yourself. What's some advice you'd give somebody out there that if they're considering to to make that uh, leap into engineering or, or manufacturing or industry? I would say it's not hard. It's challenging. And those are two different two different meanings. Hard is something that you feel like you can do. Challenging is something you can. It's just your method on how to get it done. And even though everybody's like, oh, engineering is so hard, it's not. It's challenging. And if you're up for the challenge, it'll be easy for you to do. You know, ask questions for people who have been in your shoes, who are knowledgeable um, and are currently where you want to be. They call them old heads, but I asked a lot of older guys there because, you know, it's the majority of guys in this field. So I asked a lot of older guys a lot of questions because they're so knowledgeable and, you know, they've been where I want to be. And they're just gurus of everything. If you ask them a question from 1978, they're still able to remember what the answer is. So right. I would say never be afraid to go for that challenge. And definitely figure out what area or what discipline of engineering you want to be in. It's so many broad varieties of engineering that you can go and research and do. Like you can be an engineer in forensics. It's such a vast field. So, well, I I tell you what, Alexis, I think you found the uh, we're onto something here. So you and I are gonna go in together. We're gonna make the T-shirt, and it's gonna say it's not hard, it's challenging. I think <laughs> I like that. I love the quote. It was awesome. I mean, that re- it was really good because I mean, you're you're right. But I remember some of those engineering courses in college, and you're right. It was the challenge. Now it was. Not the hardest thing in the world, like you said, but it definitely was. It challenges you and it tests your ability to learn and adapt and to think. So great advice. And to recognize that you need to ask others for help. I think a lot of times people are just scared to do that, right? Oh, yeah. That was definitely my biggest fear when I came into the industry because, you know, I'm I'm young. And, you know, because it's the majority of men, I'm like the only female. And I'm like, oh, my God. What do I need to do? And, you know, they welcomed me with open arms. And the first thing they said, which is something um, we really instill in all of our engineers that come in, have a questioning attitude because you're here to learn and you're also here to help. And we also don't want to make no mistakes and blow anything up. So we need you to ask questions. And so that was something that my first supervisor told me to do. And since then, I've been asking everybody anything I could possibly think of, even if it's the smallest thing, because you can only attain knowledge from the questions that you ask. So I love that they instilled that kind of culture at our plant. That is awesome. And it's also encouraging for me to hear that they're so willing to help you to be upfront and honest with that feedback and answers. Because, you know, sometimes perception is, you know, if I tell you you that's something that you know that I know and I just lost value in what I bring to the table. And that's not, that's not the way to look at it. You know, we should always be helping each other and bringing up that next generation. So that's awesome. Right. And it's so important because as you think about it, once the older generation decides to retire, you still have to retain that knowledge to be able to continue helping the plant function according to how it's supposed to. Right. So like you said, we're bringing up that next generation. So it's really important to instill that knowledge. No doubt. Love it. I love it, Alexis. This has been, this is, this is going great. So how, 
How about obstacles? You have have you had any obstacles in your way? You know, going maybe through engineering school or just coming in industry that you didn't foresee and you like to talk about? Um, you know, I could be a little vulnerable here. My biggest obstacle was me. I doubted myself. Like I said, it's not hard; it's challenging. But I I had so many doubts of if I was really smart enough to do it, if I was able to do it. And on the other side of the challenge, I'm like, oh snap. I actually did it. <laughs> it shocked me. And so I think believing in yourself and knowing that you're able to do it, all the answers are already there. You just have to figure out where they are. So my biggest obstacle is me and believing in myself. And I think that was the biggest challenge for me. You know, outside of being the only woman, I would love to see more women in the field. But um, that was the biggest challenge. No doubt. It was just overcoming myself and knowing that I'm able to do it. Well, you crushed it. And I mean, I know you and I've talked, we actually connected through a guest on the women in engineering series. We did Amanda. Yeah. And uh, so, so Amanda said, you got to talk to Alexa. She's awesome. And, and uh, so, I mean, you're out there. I mean, we're definitely very proud of you and support that and, and know you're, oh, you're going to you. do great things. And I am curious a little bit on any mentors, you know, you said you've had some people at Dominion who have been really helpful in your career. Does anybody stand out as that you trust and go to? Do you know that you'll get honest answers? Oh, man. <laughs> I do. Like I said, my first supervisor, I don't want to put him on the spot because he'll, he'll start blushing and turn red. <laughs> so I can first blush, though. So that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but his name was Ralph Haggard. And, man, this man is phenomenal. Not only is he knowledgeable about everything, but he, he was so personable. You know, I feel like you have to develop some type of relationship with your peers and your coworkers. He took the time out to really get to know me as a person and understand how I operate, how I work, how I best learn. From there, he was able to dictate how I should be able to achieve the goals that I need to achieve. And he does that with everyone. And I really appreciated him because whenever I had a question and whenever I was going through something like I really just can't figure this out, he was able to help me along the way and like no don't doubt yourself you can do this and um I have a new supervisor now and he's cool too but um I think my first supervisor really made a serious impact on me and we still keep in contact to this day so he's definitely one but another person that I'll never forget and this is a long well no it's not a long time ago I'm still young it's my 10th grade biology teacher and her name is Miss Taylor. And I I never told anybody about her, but I'll never forget her. She literally pulled me aside, almost like a freedom rider scene. And she's like, I don't want you to ever doubt yourself in this life. You are so smart and you are able to do anything you put your mind to. You have the best mind that I've seen in ages. Don't ever doubt yourself. You always reach for the stars and achieve everything your heart desires. And I cried, of course, because I was taking a test. And I was like, I don't think I can do it. And right. she was like, you will not sit here and cry. You can do this. And from there, she instilled such a faith and a belief in me. I was like, man, I can go climb Mount Everest now. You know, I'm a little scared to do that. But right. figuratively, yes. That's right. <laughs> so, um, of course, there's been many along the way. But those two have really stuck out for me as, as far as those specific times of my life. So, so thank you to those people. No doubt. I mean, so if I'm hearing Miss Taylor in 10th grade and, and Ralph, who was your supervisor, mm -hmm. sounds like they both were just very intentional and they yeah. actually cared and, and had empathy and compassion towards you as a person. And I think that's what yeah. sets a really a good mentor apart. Would you agree? Oh, yeah. I think being personable is the most important part because everyone can attain knowledge. Everyone can attain wisdom. But having that personality to be personal with people is so important because you reach people on a, a different level and they're able to be more receptive of what you have to say, depending on how personable you are. It's really about relationship. It and is. It's, it's not, a, yeah. And so I think that's the most important part in regards to being a mentor. Have you had a chance yet, Alexis, to be a mentor to someone else that's coming up or maybe through, you know, STEM fields or things like that? Yes, I have. I love my baby. <laughs> um, I've had a lot. I've 
gained a lot of mentees through tutoring. I love math, so I still tutor and offer tutoring services to a lot of math students that are still in high school and middle school. And I've also become a mentor for a lot of young girls through church. And so their parents would be like, hey, can you talk to my daughter? And I'm like, I speak to them all the time. And they're like, yeah, but can you like talk to her? And so it's kind of like a lot of parents just throw them on me. But I mean, from there, you learn a lot about a lot about these students and these girls. And, you know, they go through a lot at such a young age. And they know a lot more than I did when I was going through that time period. But like I said, being personable, you're able to gain so much more from it because they're so much more receptive and you can help them get on the right path where they need to be. So right. I'm glad and blessed to have had the opportunity. Definitely. Well, I think they're equally as blessed to have you speaking into their lives at that point oh. in their life. Right. I mean, cause it's so important. Yeah. We have to be so careful. I hope our listeners get this. You really do have to be careful about, you know, who you let speak into your life. Yeah. So, Hats off to you and for the moms out there that are recognizing, hey, I want her speaking to my kids. You know, that's <laughs> that's wonderful. It's an honor. And I'm truly blessed because they bless me just as much as they see me blessing them. I, I'm so much more blessed from it. So, very, yeah. very nice. Well, thank you for walking us through that. And that touched me personally. So just thank you for being honest with that. And mm-hmm. let's let's talk a little bit. You mentioned a myth about nuclear and it's not safe what about just engineering in general because you know you you went through the ranks at south carolina and people have this perception about engineering if there's something out there that you like you know what you think it's this way but this is what it's really about what would that be it would go back to it's not hard it's challenging a lot of people would always say it's hard but honestly engineering is simply there's a problem let's figure out a way to fix it And there's so many problems in the world, which is why there are so many disciplines to engineering, architectural, civil, biomed, you know, environmental. And there's so many problems that they have in each of those categories. And they're asking you to solve them. You're a problem solver. It's really, that's all engineering is. It's how can we solve this problem that we have in this specific realm? And it's really not hard. And I wish more people would really look into it. Because engineering has always been classified as just, oh, mechanical, electrical. And I wish we would be able to kind of put engineering on an exhibit to where we can show people what engineering is about, the different disciplines that engineering has, the different possibilities it has to offer. And that way we can bring more people into the STEM field. A lot of people see STEM as intimidating and really is so invigorating. I love the STEM field. And I was exposed to it early. So if we can put that in the forefront of our young people's minds, because they're still developing so much more in their brains at a young age, if we can just put that before them, then we probably would be able to bring up a lot more, not just engineers, but a lot a lot of other different fields and stuff at an early age, because they are so bright. They are so smart. <laughs> yeah. And they're moving much faster than, you know, my generation did. And one thing, too, is like you don't have to be a genius at math to go into right. engineering. I, I feel like there's this perception out there that, well, you know, Johnny's struggling in ninth grade algebra, so so much for STEM <laughs> for him. What? Are you kidding me? <laughs> like, no. Right. Right. That is so true. You do not have to be a genius at math. Now, of course, math is going to be one of the general education courses you're going to have to take, which why they offer tutors to help. You know, I do what I do, but you don't have to be a math genius. You don't have to be a science genius. It's all about what discipline of engineering you want to go into. Now, if you're doing, you know, electrical or mechanical, I would advise you be good at math, but (laughs) there are so many other other entities to it. There are. And I think we just have to keep encouraging the next generation, you know, ask those questions. If they have an interest in math, you know, encourage that, try to probe that, particularly someone like yourself, you can take some things you're learning in science and engineering and correlate it straight to stuff you're working on. And sometimes that's all it takes for a young mind to see, oh, that's why I had to learn that, (laughs) you know, just to to, to connect the dots. Right. Because a a lot of us going through school, we're like, we don't even use the math that we learned. Why are we 
in a way it's important, but if you can find out how it's correlated to what you're doing or what you're going to be doing, I think they'll be more receptive of it. Just understanding, okay, why am I doing this and how is it helping me to where I need to go? Right. So I definitely agree with that. How about you and your role now with, you have that electrical background, things are changing in manufacturing and engineering and industry period. You hear these terms like digital transformation, the IOT, connectivity, industry 4.0. How are some of those things affecting you? Have, have, has some of that hit your plate yet? Surprisingly, none of that has hit my plate yet, but I'm pretty sure, <laughs> pretty sure it's on the way. Pretty sure it's on the way, but yeah. <laughs> No doubt. I mean, it, it definitely is, is coming because, I mean, more people is all about, you know, big data and getting everything from the IT to the OT talking and connecting, right? So, I mean, uh, yeah. no doubt, probably a big reason, just thinking out loud, is the security aspect from a nuclear standpoint, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And that that's a big thing for a nuclear site, too, is security. <laughs> yeah, Absolutely. <laughs> So in your job that you're doing now or the role that you have, when you're having the most fun and you're really enjoying it and you're crushing it and you're like, this is what, this is what I love to do. What are you doing in those moments? Oh man, I'm troubleshooting. (laughs) It sounds so weird to say, but I find the most enjoyment when I'm looking at like a breadboard or some kind of circuit or some wires that are crossed and troubleshooting as to why this thing is broken how can we fix it I think that's where I find the most enjoyment and lately I've been finding a lot more enjoyment in finding out how everything works together as a system because a lot of times you know you you can get complacent when you're just focused on your individual system making sure it works according to regulatory requirements um, and restrictions and things like that. And so you kind of get complacent. You kind of get in your own little bubble. I'm just looking at my system. But now that I've conquered, okay, I know what my system is supposed to do. Now that I can look at other people's system and how it interacts with mine, it's like I'm in school all over again. I feel like I'm back in college in the front seat, like, ooh, tell me more. So definitely looking at different circuits and systems. So those have been my what do they say now? It tickles my fancy. I love that. That's very cool. So I guess at where you're at, are you allowed to to really dive deeper into the system and understand how the connectivity works and how everything ties together? Yes. They offer extensive training consistently on how things work because you always want to remain fresh and up to date on how everything works. That's the biggest thing. Training is very essential in the nuclear industry. That's pretty cool. So, I mean, as you're learning more about how this all ties together, how is that impacting you specifically on the stuff you're working on? That helps me with knowing my system much better. But it also helps me kind of play devil's advocate for someone else's system because I'm more knowledgeable of how everything's supposed to work together. For example, if your pipe didn't open, why did my system respond? It's supposed to respond when it is open or something like that so it helps me kind of um, become a well-rounded engineer they want you to be t-shaped not just cross-shaped so you want to be more well-rounded and get more knowledge in different areas that's the biggest thing about it is becoming a more well-rounded engineer that's pretty cool so when you look into the future and you're looking out what types of projects or initiatives get you excited Hmm, I would love to see more reactors being built. It would provide so much more power. It would provide a lot more job opportunities for people here. And also would get more people involved in engineering and in the STEM field. That's something for them to look forward to. And also would help the consumers with prices of of electricity and things like that. So You're saying you're going to help my power bill, Alexis? That's what I'm hearing. You know, I'm going to do my best. If that's what they want to do in the future, I'm going to try to bring them down for you. All right. But, um, well, you're on the record yeah. with this now, so okay. <laughs> <laughs> that is that is upper management decision. I am not responsible <laughs> to these decisions. <laughs> I kid because I care. That's awesome. 
yeah. <laughs> well, let, let's 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 get off of work and the career and all the awesome things you're oh. doing, and talk about just hobbies. <laughs> what do you enjoy to do? Oh man, I'm a country girl, so I've just gotten into fishing. I love fishing. I love baking. I'm a big baker, so like cakes and all that other stuff. And I just I love the outdoors. I'm starting to get into archery and, you know, biking, skating. So I do a lot of different stuff. I always try to find something new to do. The one thing I haven't gone back to do is hiking because that took a lot of air support getting up there. That was that was very tiresome, but it's a good workout, I recommend, for anyone who can do it. It is. It is. No doubt. So you, <laughs> you're starting fishing, huh? So what what uh, what type of fishing are you doing? I caught just some little freshwater fish. I caught some crappie. I'm trying to go and catch a, a catfish, but with the fishing pole, not with my hand. I can't. That scares me. Right. So, <laughs> but one day, hopefully, I can go deep sea fishing. Oh. So we'll see. You should probably do, uh, go maybe flounder fishing. That's fun if you get a chance to go fl- oh. to, for flounder. That they're a fun fight on the reel there. So very cool. Oh. So you're doing fishing. You like some baking and. Just spending time outside. Now, what's your archery? So how long have you been doing that? I got to wonder, how long have you been shooting a bow and arrow? So I used to do it really often when I was younger, like in elementary and middle. And I kind of lost it from high school to college. So I'm starting to pick it back up. So I'm excited. And, you know, of course, I'm going to make sure I hit the target. So I'm going through lessons again and everything to make sure I hit the target and not anything else. So (laughs) that's awesome. My, my, um, my daughters, they're eight and 10 and we got them a bow a couple of years ago, a little, little small bow, you know, and I went Mm. and got a, uh, it's the actual deer that stands up. So you're not shooting that piece of paper. I don't, I don't know what they're made out of, but my, my youngest daughter is probably like, I don't know, seven at the time or six. She shot it, like shot its ear off. (laughs) (laughs) That was the funniest thing. So I was like, all right, go get that ear. We're taking it inside. We're cooking that thing tonight, you know? <laughs> so maybe try not to shoot the ear off the targets, but, uh, oh, my best. <laughs> but have fun with it. So that, that's awesome. You know, uh, what about your family? Anything you'd like to share with our listeners? Oh uh, man. Family is probably the most important thing to me. Family is consistent. Family is love. And, Family is that support that I have when, <laughs> whenever I need it. Because sometimes I'll call my dad while I'm at work, and I'm like, Dad, I just cannot figure this problem out. And my dad will just say something crazy like, just connect the fibrillator to the doohickey on the cat's paw and just multiply that to the third square root of 2 plus 2. And I'm like, Dad, what? <laughs> that makes no sense. Right. But from him being so kooky, it actually – help me figure out how to solve the problem. So in their own weird way, my family has been the best support system and I love them so much. They're very unique in their own right. They help make me me. So I I love them to pieces. Well, that is awesome. (laughs) Sounds like you have a great core family around you and it's so important. I can appreciate your dad and his answers, the way he messes with you. (laughs) Mine does the same. My dad's my hero. So when I, I... if I want a good laugh, I, I just got to get him started. And I mean, yeah. it, it even came down last night when my, my wife fixed the meal and she didn't have the side that we always have with it growing up. So I text my dad. I'm like, hey, look, text text my wife and, and get on her about fixing the side. And he did. <laughs> and it, it was like 10 minutes of funny text messages and gifts going back and forth. I couldn't hardly eat. I was laughing so hard. So I, I'm with you there. Oh, gosh. So, oh, you taught him how to use gifts. Oh, yes, and then, now oh, there's no man. end, you know. So. Yeah, my dad just got on TikTok. It's ridiculous. Oh, your dad's on TikTok. Take, nice. I can't take it. My I can't take it anymore. My dad's a Snapchat champion. And it's like, oh, God. He's snapping everything. I'm like, all right, chill out. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, what about like uh, resources? We love to share that with our listeners uh, podcasts, books, movies. I'm not sure. What are you enjoying what, that you would recommend? Oh, um, okay, this is going to sound really weird, but I I use different methods to get what I need. I read a lot of leadership books that teach me about how to be a leader, even though in order to be a leader, you need to follow first. 
So now that I'm master following, I need to learn how to be a leader because there's going to be somebody that comes in under me that I'm going to need to teach how to do what I do or go where I go. And they might have some questions. So I want to be able to be a leader to other people. So I read a lot of leadership books. I watch anime. And that sounds so weird, being that I, you know, I'm getting older. But anime instills a lot of different characteristics, like believing in yourself and you can do it and all of that stuff. And loyalty and supporting your friends and things like that. I don't know how I got that message watching it with my friends or with my nephew, but that's what I got from the little cartoon. But also, I would say other people, my role models and things like that, talking with them, those have helped instill some things in me, a lot of things. So it goes back to asking those questions to those people and being careful about who you let speak into your life as well. Right, right. Those are the big three things that I do. Very awesome. Thank you for sharing that. I mean, good information, good resources, and good advice. And we, we <laughs> call it Eco Ask Why, Alexis. We, we love to get to the why to, towards the end of the show. And we're just talking more about the passion, you know, what drives mm-hmm. people. So if somebody were to ask you what your personal why is, how would you answer that? My personal why would be my family. Uh, my family is just like any other family. We have problems. And I want to be the one to solve those problems. I believe that God has blessed me to be able to be where I am. And he's given me a gift to do what I do. And being that I see my family as every other consumer family here, I'm grateful to be able to do the job that I am doing. I'm in solving those problems to help other consumers and stuff have power and electricity, Wi-Fi, lights, and all those things that we, some people take for granted every day. But I'm grateful that we're able to do it so then they can have that feel good like all right when i go and cut this switch on i know the light's gonna come on so right right i think my family is my biggest why that's a great why i'm with you there it really gives you a sense of purpose you know yeah and keeps you grounded too just like your dad telling you to to multiply time the square root of two (laughs) Um, you you gotta have people like that that can speak to you that can bring you back because they can also keep you humble which is a good good thing so Hey, this has That's been the important thing. <laughs> no, no doubt, no doubt. This has been so much fun, Alexis, and just <laughs> hearing your story. And you know, I know there's people listening out there, and they're wondering, if, you know, what should my next steps be? Hey, listen to Alexis, see what she she's accomplished <laughs> with engineering and the things she's doing at Dominion. So, just a wonderful episode. Thank you for taking the time and being so open with our listeners. Oh, thank you for having me. I, I'm so grateful to be here. <laughs> Well, you enjoy that beautiful weather in South Carolina, and I guess uh, we'll just end with uh, Go Cox. Oh, yeah. Go Cox. Thank you, Alexis. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for listening to Eco Ask Why. This show is supported ad-free by Electrical Equipment Company. Eco is redefining the expectations of an electrical distributor by placing people and ideas before products. Please subscribe and share with your colleagues and friends. Also, leave comments, feedback, and any new topics that you would like to hear. To learn more or to share your insights, visit ecosy.com. That's E-E-C-O-A-S-K-S-W-H-Y.com.